Hi, welcome to Consider This, Simplifying the COVID-19 Conversation. I'm Marianne McDowell, and I'm the co-host of this series with Dr. Heidi Bidinger burnett This week, we'll be talking about vaccines and the immunology of COVID-19 with guests Brian Baker and Jeff Shorey. But I thought I'd give you a little primer on, this, uh, on the vaccines that are, are currently under development. So I uh, often use the New York Times coronavirus vaccine tracker, and I put the link in the additional information if you'd like to look at it yourself. Um, but it, it tracks pretty up to date the vaccines that are either in uh, preclinical, not shown here, or in clinical phases of development. Today, I'm just going to talk about the types of vaccines that are in phase three clinical trials. So there's four, actually there's five, but I'm going to start talking with four different kinds of vaccines that are being developed. Genetic, viral vector vaccines, protein vaccines, and an inactivated or attenuated coronavirus vaccine. In the genetic realm, we have two kinds, DNA and RNA. Um, if you remember our central dogma of uh, molecular biology is DNA to RNA to protein. Um, and two of these um, are currently in phase three trials, and they're both RNA vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer. The other uh, category is viral vector, and that's where we take a virus, a non-coronavirus, and put in genetic material to encode the spike protein. Um, and there's four of those currently in um, phase three clinical trials. The third category is just protein, and that's basically just taking that spike protein and, uh, and injecting that with maybe some other uh, formulation to enhance the immune response. And then we have the inactivated or attenuated category. Um, and that's where the coronavirus is either um, made inactive by treating it with a chemical or UV light or something, or it's attenuated so it only replicates a few times. And there's uh, two Chinese companies that uh, ha have vaccines in case three clinical trials in that category. The fifth category is actually repurposed vaccines. And the idea here is using a vaccine uh, to another pathogen, another virus or another bacteria or parasite to just activate the immune response. And so the idea is that if you just activate the immune response, that there'll be enough immunity or collateral immunity to get rid of the coronavirus. This particular one is, is testing BCG, which is a vaccine that's used to protect against childhood um, tuberculosis. Um, some other people have talked about using the polio vaccine, but I don't think it is as far in the pipeline. So because RNA vaccines are new, there's never been uh, a licensed RNA vaccine before. I thought I'd tell you a little bit how they work. So basically you have RNA and it's encapsulated um, and made to be a little more stable than RNA usually is. And um, the different companies have devised different ways to get that RNA into the cell, but it basically gets into the cell and then uh, it unwinds and the host cell then reads that RNA and this RNA encodes in the two cases that I gave examples, the spike protein. So the idea is then your cells would just slowly release that spike protein um, outside of the cell and induce, induce immunity. These RNA vaccines uh, currently are requiring boosters, so everyone would have to have two shots, and special, special freezers. So it needs to be a uh, frozen uh, colder than what your normal uh, freezer in your house would be. Now the protein vaccines just skip all of that part and they just give the protein uh, directly to stimulate immunity. The viral vector vaccines are interesting. So they actually use um, in all cases uh, a virus, an adenovirus, then these adenoviruses cause common cold in, human, in humans. And then they put in the genetic material to encode the spike protein. 
Um, one company, CanSino Bio, actually uses human adenovirus 5. This is interesting because like 40% of people already have antibodies to human adenovirus 5. And so it's, uh, at least in the U.S., so it's possible that um, it would have a heart, it, ha, your immune system would block it before it could stimulate immunity to the spike protein. Interestingly, this virus has been approved by the Chinese military uh, for emergency vaccination. The Russian vaccine, or Sputnik V, um, actually is a combination of human adenovirus 5 and human adenovirus 26. Uh, not as many people have been exposed to human adenovirus 26. Johnson & Johnson um, has a vaccine uh, encoding the spike protein in the viral vector human adenovirus 26. And what's so promising about this one is it only takes a single dose. Uh, much easier to va vaccinate a lot of people if they don't need boosters, and you don't have to make, uh, you could only have to make half as much of the vaccine. The Astra AstraZeneca vaccine, um, one out of the UK and Oxford, actually encodes the spike protein in a chimpanzee adenovirus. And this is the vaccine uh, that has stopped, it's still stopped in the United States because they had a case of a transverse myelitis, so an adverse effect. So the inactivated or attenuated vaccines, there's two companies, both Chinese. Um, Sinopharm has two that are currently in phase three clinical trials in the United Arab Emirates, and they have emergency approval for these vaccines for um, high-risk populations. Um, the other one is a, a called CoronaVac, it's also inactivated. So this means that they're inactivated and they don't uh, replicate. Um, and China has approved this vaccine for emergency approval. So that's all I have for right now. I hope that helps you follow the conversation a little bit. Uh, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please contact us at consider at nd.edu. Until next time, 